Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 8, Part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the metaphor of attempting to reap what has not been sown at all, and the role of compensation in forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 13th of December 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. The role of compensation in forgiveness and repentance. So now that we've really explored compensation and how it's operating and the, the different f sort of flavors that we can come to be aware of, mm. of how compensation is operating in our life, now we get the pleasure of sort of joining that with the overall purpose of our series, which is about forgiveness and repentance, mm. to help our listeners see how compensation relates to forgiveness and repentance. Um, so if we look at what we've already discussed about compensation, it's pretty logical to deduce that it must be compensation must be acting in harmony with forgiveness and repentance. Those laws operate in harmony, but also that there must be some relationship between the two because they are all operating to correct sin mm -hmm. and to bring us towards happiness and to remove pain and suffering from our lives. Mm. Compensation is acting to do that and the laws of forgiveness and repentance are doing that. Yes, they're just one's a higher law than the other. Yes. That's all. Yes. Mm. So they logically they have to be related. So yes. let's talk about how. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we've listed a few examples here in our outline, uh, which I can just raise. Um, firstly, when I refuse to forgive, there's noticeable negative effects on my life and my personal levels of happiness. And I'm also allowing unloving behavior towards myself. Mm. Which is interesting, isn't it? Like we, we often think when we refuse to forgive that, you know, we're stopping unloving behavior towards ourselves. Mm. But the reality is by refusing to forgive, it's, it's a remarkable thing that what happens is because you haven't let go of the emotional damage that's inside mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. that causes you to have to you know, at some point in the future forgive yeah. and you haven't released that damage, mm -hmm. you now act in the damage. Yeah. And part of the damage when other people have damaged you is you have a poor sense of worth and a poor sense of self and a poor sense of what is right and what is wrong and a poor sense of you know what is ethical behavior on the part of other people mm -hmm. and a poor sense of what is moral behavior on the part of other people which means you tolerate it yeah it means that you put up with it more yeah. so so you're by not forgiving you're actually encouraging yeah. other people who are like the people who you haven't forgiven yeah to damage you further yeah because you put up with their behavior yeah yeah yeah. And that's a and very interesting fact. It's very interesting, isn't it? Mm. And if we're relating it with compensation, we've already said when we're refusing to forgive, these things are happening. Um, and there's not only that tendency to interact with people in that way, the compensatory pain is being accrued through the continuing continuation to act in the injured belief systems isn't it that's right so so if we give sort of an example of that mm -hmm. let's say you've been damaged in a certain way emotionally yeah. you know when you're a child mm -hmm. and you refuse to forgive the parent let's say who caused that damage yeah. it's highly likely you will attract a group of people ser a serial group or even a group of people around yeah. you who all treat you the same way yes but because you haven't forgiven your parent, yeah. you don't see them treating you the same way mm. because you've got all the anger and rage with your parent, yeah. right, that you haven't forgiven yet. Yeah. You don't see that actually there's a whole heap of people in your life who are also doing the same thing to mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, you attract them into your life and they do those same things to you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so your pain increases. Now, usually when our pain increases, we also desensitize further to our pain. And as we desensitize further to our pain, we are actually then attracting more and more and more of these people. Mm. Uh, so, so that's the law of attraction. 
and the law of compensation acting together there. Correct. And the law of repentance and forgiveness in the sense that we're refusing to yes. activate that law. Yes. So, so by the combination of all of these laws acting yes. in harmony with each other now, yes. we have an increasing amount of pain an increasing amount of people who did, who are the same kind of people who treated us badly in our life when we were young. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, that pain's going to get so intense and our life's going to get so uncomfortable mm -hmm. that we'll realise, ah, man, my life is just full of people like my mother yeah. or like my father, you know what yeah. I mean? And look what I'm doing to yeah. feed them all and keep yeah. them all going and everything, and it's really hurting me. Mm -hmm. And then you realise, ah, if I just forgive my mother yeah. or my father for their treatment of me mm -hmm. based on what they did, mm -hmm. now there's a good likelihood I'll see every person who's like them in my life yeah. and they will naturally dissipate out of my life as yeah. a result of me now seeing them and raising with them the issues yes. of their unloving treatment of me. And engaging in emotional process. Exactly. Yes. It has to be an yeah. emotional process anyway. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness and repentance, as we've already established in sessions one to three, yeah. is an emotional process. Yeah. So it has to be an emotional process. But, but once we go through that process, mm -hmm. we end up with now being able to see very clearly the damage that was done that we have forgiven, and ironically, now that we're forgiven, our eyesight is clear mm -hmm. to see the future. If anybody of that same kind of type enters our life, we go, no, there's a problem here with that person. Yes. Straight now, away. Yeah, that's right. And we want to talk about this coming up at serious length. So mm. here we're just dot pointing it through them. That's so right. We, we're just so giving a bit of an than, overview yes, now. Yeah. But but you can see this is a big problem. Yes. And not forgiving actually causes you to no longer see the truth of what damage has been done to you. And is continuing to be and done. And is to continuing you. to be done yes. to you. Yes. Yes. All right. Mm. Um, when we refuse to repent, then there's noticeable effects in our life and our personal levels of happiness so just the same as forgiveness we have unhappiness but we are also engaging in unloving behavior we continue to engage in unloving behavior not just towards ourselves but towards other people and particularly towards other people yes so so here uh, in this kind of example what we're saying is that if we can't recognize that one of our attitudes is out of harmony with love, let's say it's the attitude of superiority and we love feeling superior, right? Mm -hmm. If we can't see that that attitude is out of harmony with love, what will happen is we'll keep treating everybody around us like they're inferior mm -hmm. and they'll keep treating us like we're superior. <laughs> like they'll keep treating us in a way that we think we like. Yeah. But we don't understand we're destroying our soul so rapidly now, mm -hmm. right? And engaging in behavior that harms others so much that we're gonna end up in such a dark condition that recovering from our condition is gonna be very, very difficult, mm. right? Mm. So this is another problem because we can't see our own bad treatment of others mm -hmm. and other people are willing to feed inside of us our desire for that treatment mm -hmm. to continue. Mm -hmm we're going to end up in such a poor condition and with such amount of pain and suffering to deal with yep. that it's going to be immense. Yes. And, and this is a big problem. It is. Yep. It's a big problem. Yeah. So um, obviously you've just established that forgiveness and repentance lead us to remain living in false beliefs and false ideas and acting in those and, and not seeing truth. Hmm. So then, as we've learned through these discussions of compensation, the effects, the corrective effects of compensation are going to continually compound, aren't mm. they? Yeah. And they might actually lead me to the point of considering that I have a different option. <laughs> So, well, yes, the, and usually it's only the pain, unfortunately. Yes. Isn't it? That causes yes. you to go, hang on a sec, something's wrong here. Yeah. And I've got to find out what it is. Yes. And to have a sincere desire to find out what it is. Yes. Now, it's harder to have a sincere desire to find out what it is if it's something that we have to repent for mm -hmm. than it is to find out something we have to forgive for. Mm -hmm. So quite frequently what I observe mm -hmm. is people get a lot of pain and they think it's to do with what they have to forgive for. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is actually to do with what they have to repent for. Yeah. 
and they don't make the connection to no. what they have to repent for. Because when we have to repent, we have to reassess our image of ourselves, don't we? We yes. have to reconsider. Uh, well, yeah, people who have to repent do have to say, well, maybe what I thought about myself and how good I am uh, is it's all just an illusion. Is not, yeah, it's not quite right. <laughs> no. You have to challenge that. And that can, a lot of people resist that. Well, most people resist that for a large portion of their life until yep. the pain is so great yep. that they are forced to consider it. Yep. And then, as you said, some people double down their efforts and continue to blame other people for hurting them when they're experiencing Yeah, and pain. a lot of people who pass yep. finish up with a list in front of them of all the things they've mm -hmm. done, which they then refuse to repent for, yep. and they get even darker by engaging even further bad yes. behaviour. Yep. And so, you know, a lot of people after they pass further degrade their condition yep. to such a point of pain yep. that most of it, many of them live in a place of almost unbearable pain mm. and they can no longer even act. They mm -hmm. can no longer even do the unloving thing they wanted to do. Yeah. That's how much pain they're in because they're in so much physical pain. It's impossible to actually act anymore mm -hmm. until they deal with some of their pain. Until they deal with it. And yeah. that's when most people who need to repent stop. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. They could stop a lot sooner, mm. but unfortunately most people don't. Don't. Mm. All right, well, so really here in this section, we're really getting to answer the question, how does compensation help play a role in our personal engagement with forgiveness and repentance? Yes, so, so this is all about... We've started to talk about this, haven't we? Yeah, this yeah. is all about the feedback mechanism. Yes. The beautiful uh, role of the law of compensation is because we have yet to engage forgiveness and repentance, mm -hmm. we need some feedback on the issue. Yes. Right? And the, the law of conversation is there going, right, here we go. Here's your feedback yeah. on the issue of yeah. where you're at. Yeah. Right? What, what is the reality yeah. of your life? Yeah. And, and the more pain and suffering, physical and emotional, that we experience, the more we face the reality of our life, unfortunately, we're very resistive to facing the reality of our life before yeah. then. Yeah. And so we need this pain and suffering to get to the point where we face the reality of our life, that something is wrong mm -hmm. and that something has to be related to love Yeah. in some way. Yeah. Because anything out of harmony with love is going to cause pain and suffering. Yes. So it's got to be my concept of love, my belief systems about love, what I'm doing, thinking that I'm loving or, or thinking that I should get away with it even. These things are the problem and the compensation is providing me that feedback mechanism. It's, it's a great, it's like yesterday, you call it God's backstop. You know, it's there to, okay, you're refusing this other stuff. Here's the info. Here's, Here's the, the bottom info. line, guys. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is your bottom line. <laughs> the backstop, yep. yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. We're going to break it into sections and we'll talk about it in um, more detail. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's do that. Compensation helps me forgive. What role does compensation or reaping what I sow play in my desire to forgive? Yes, well, obviously, this, again, as we just stated in our introduction to this section, it's a feedback mechanism. Mm -hmm. So what are the feedback mechanisms? What, what's the feedback that I'm going to be getting? <laughs> yes, so right. if I'm refusing to, to forgive, forgive a person... What, what what kind am of I things gonna are see? going to be happening? Yeah, what no. am I going to see? So the first one is, I'm going to stay connected to the people who harm me. Yes. So that may, and, and you see this a lot, right? In our childhood, oftentimes parents have certain addictions with their children. The, the parents, through those addictions, harm their child. Mm -hmm. And the child then remains connected to the parent until the parent dies. And even afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, after they've passed, there's still a connection, there's still a bond, a spirit to person on earth bond mm -hmm. that remains in place. And the person on earth, the person, who, the child, who, who's now an adult, um, Ha can't act without approval from their parent. Yeah. They can't do something without approval from the parent. They distraught whenever they don't get the approval from mm -hmm. their parent. Every time their parent abuses them and makes them suffer even more, they feel even worse again yeah. and so forth. And, and this connection will remain mm -hmm. until you forgive your parent. And, and so there you're speaking, you know, when you're talking about just now about the parent, about the child that like continually trying to, in this addictive sort of a frenzy with the parent, trying to avoid emotion. Um, 
that can happen, but also it can happen that you begin to face some truth about your parent. Uh, you say, actually, I can see with my mind and I've got a bit of compensatory pain about the fact that there's something that's very unhealthy in our relationship. And actually, I'm not going to spend that much time with you uh, because that's hurting and I don't like that and I can see it's a problem. But the problem but is it's hurting. That's the real problem is it's still hurting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just trying to draw this distinction mm -hmm. between, you know... It's a good you, distinction. You can actually say there's a toxic relationship with someone and, and leave get it. out of their life and yeah. not see each other. Without actually emotionally leaving it. <laughs> Without actually dealing with the hurt. That's right. And then you do remain energetically connected with that person. And I have experienced that where you, you feel there's unresolved emotion between you and that other person. And whether you like it or not, and whether you're fighting it or not, you remain connected to them. And you keep acting in the way they want you to act. Yes, even if they're not there. Even if they're not there, they can be on the other side of the yeah, world and yeah. you, you'll do that. Yes. And that's yeah. the drawback of not forgiving. Yes, yeah. and that's the feedback we're that's getting. That's the feedback from the law of compensation. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other thing is that we remain unhappy. It's impossible to experience contentment and uh, joy uh, if we haven't forgiven. Yes, because not forgiving causes all these emotions to to be stagnant inside of yeah. your soul-based energy system, yeah. if we can call it that. Yeah. And what that does is it causes harm to your spirit and your physical bodies. Yes. So you can actually get diseases now because of these particular emotions still stored within you that yeah. you haven't let go of. You're not you're not releasing, mm -hmm. and obviously you're afraid of releasing them. But releasing them would be far better than keeping them in you. Yeah. It's like it's like a festering wound inside of a person. You know. Sometimes I liken it to to like imagine going to a rubbish dump and eating all the food that's there mm. that's full of maggots and everything and you're putting it in your tummy that's what you're doing when you store these emotions yeah. these maggots going the maggots of these emotions which are all dark will yeah. eat your insides out yes physically right? and emotionally physically and emotionally yeah. and and we need to do something about it but yeah. but and the law, the law of compensation is reflecting back to us wow you're getting sicker, yep. your life's not going very good here, mm -hmm. you're emotionally destroyed a lot of the time. There's all this pain, right? Yep. Something's wrong. Yes. Something's wrong, but, but yep. it's emotionally caused. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's a lot, not, not forgiving somebody, that's what's causing it. That's what's causing it. Mm -hmm. The next one you've mentioned in our intro, I remain unable to make wise decisions about other people who will harm me. Yes, because I've not forgiven the people who have harmed me, I'm not sensitive to the ways in which they've harmed me. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I'm going to attract people who harm me in a similar way. Mm. And this is why people do things like marrying someone that is an alcoholic like their dad, yeah. for example, because they're yeah. not sensitive enough to see there's something wrong with that. Yes. You know, and they have to forgive their dad first before they'll see that their dad being an alcoholic was a bad thing. Yeah. And once they understand that and they stop, they stop you know, in their head making excuses for him and everything mm -hmm. they won't then make excuses for an alcoholic partner yes. anymore either yeah you know they'll actually face the truth about that partner and that's that's inherent in the process of forgiveness is that we must emotionally face the painful truth mustn't we yes. and be willing to experience that yes. and we can't do that intellectually no and even if we do it intellectually and choose a man who we're positive is different to our dad <laughs> the pain the compensatory pain of not forgiving even if that guy is different to our dad is going to show up in that relationship anyway sooner or later that's how the laws operate that's right yeah. we've probably not, attracted the person through yeah. the law of attraction yeah. which is going to mean that yeah. that person has something in them that is going to trigger something relating to yeah. your dad sooner yeah. or later <laughs> or even you are going to interact with that person in a way that you would react with your dad and you will create pain in that relationship yeah you might actually cause him to turn to drink and become <laughs> a drunkard in the example that i gave about your dad being a yeah. drunkard you yeah. know what i mean yeah. you may do things to him that causes him to go to drink even though he wasn't when you began <laughs> yeah or you just don't trust you find it hard to establish intimacy because and yeah. and so you're pushing that person away continually which creates pain for Painful. both of you yeah that's yeah. right yeah. So, so there's a lot of reason for, you know, forgiving. But here we're seeing the law of compensation working to show you, ah, yes. I haven't forgiven yet. That's yes. why these things are happening. Yes. I'm also unable to grow emotionally. And here, just to be clear, are you saying that that's an operation of the law of compensation? 
the inability to grow emotionally. Yeah, you're, it is an operation of the law of compensation. You, by your actions, are doing something that is co directly causing you to not be able to be able to release emotion or re receive new ones. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you're not growing emotionally. Yes. And so the law of compensation is actually showing you through that, that, ah, my lack of growth emotionally, my lack of change over my last 10 years of life or 20 years of life emotionally yeah. is a direct result of my refusal to address certain emotions mm -hmm. and my refusal to deny them, run away from them, deny, you know, make out they don't exist at all mm -hmm. in denying them, run away from them by, by doing all sorts of things like engaging addictions and whatever else. Or, or just even, you know, you know, being angry and resentful that they're there. Yep. Um, all of those things are, are going to have a very negative effect on you. But that is the law in operation. That's the law in operation. Yes. Whatever affects you, remember, that is not based upon the desire of others is the law of compensation in operation. In operation. Anything that affects you that is based upon the desire of others is based on whether they're giving you a gift of their love or being a loving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case, uh, we're talking about things that are the direct results of the law of compensation. Good on. Mm. All right. I remain driven to please people who have an intention to control me. Yes. So I have an addiction, which is what it means to be driven. Mm -hmm. I have an addiction to go towards the people who are like the people who harmed me in my childhood. Mm. I have an addiction to be attracted to them. So, so, for example, let's say I was sexually abused in my childhood. There is going to be some underlying addictions inside of me that are going to cause me to gravitate towards people who are going to abuse me in my adulthood. Mm. And, and this is obviously going to be very hard to accept, uh, but it will happen. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it will happen to show you, ah, oh, I haven't forgiven. Yeah. I haven't gone through the process of actually forgiving what happened in my childhood yet. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, very good. And I remain driven to meet the, well, you've just said that, the unhealthy addictions of others. Yes. So my uh, own and other people's addictions. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's a terrible thing because you, you, you end up intellectually, you go, oh, that hurt, oh, that hurt, that hurt, you know, based on my childhood, while at the same time you're actually living a life that's going to create exactly the same kind of hurt. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's very self-destructive. Yeah. But because we haven't forgiven, we don't see it. Yeah. We, we don't have any clarity in, in any sight, you know, mm -hmm. insight, mm -hmm. wisdom on the matter. Mm -hmm. And so we, we just go ahead and do whatever is necessary to be done to live our lives, we think, yeah. while at the same time attracting a whole group of things because we haven't forgiven what happened in our past. In our past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, of course, you could add and add and add and add and add to this. We, you know, it could be a conversation for the next few weeks, but yeah. it, it, what we're trying to illustrate here is there are signs we have not forgiven. Mm. Are you recognizing them <laughs> yeah. or are you just ignoring them? Yeah. yeah. That's the question we really need to ask ourselves. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If I truly forgive, Compensation is going to provide the feedback mechanism that's going to help me to see some positive things now. So we've just yes. talked about the negative effects yep. um, that we will see. So let's talk now about if I have entered and completed a process of forgiveness, what am I going to see in my life? Yeah, so before we sort of proceed with this, perhaps we need to just remind everyone, what we're trying to do here is help them measure mm -hmm. whether they're forgiven. Mm -hmm. And if the previous things have been happening a lot in their life, that's an indication they have not forgiven. Yeah. If these, some of these things are happening in their life that we're going to now list, mm -hmm. it, it's an indication that perhaps they've started the process of forgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and this way, in this way, we can measure. Yes. We can say, okay, have I really forgiven? Mm -hmm. You know, all this intellectual bull crap that I tell myself, <laughs> right, um, that I have forgiven, you know, and I've moved on with my life. You know, that's yeah, the general yeah. thing most people tell themselves. Oh, I've moved on from that. Well, I'm over that, that now um, and all that stuff. There's right? some method where you just every day get up in the morning and say, and say I'm forgive, over that. I forgive, I'm I forgive, you I or whatever. I that person, I forgive right. that person, I forgive that person. How do you actually measure whether that's true? Yes. Is what yes. we're saying. Well, the previous things we listed are th things that indicate it's not true. Mm -hmm. 
these things that we're going to list are things that will indicate more that it might be true. Okay. <laughs> so let me go and uh, list them and you can comment. Sure. Um, so firstly, I'm no longer connected to the persons who harm me. All right. I'm no longer wanting to have relationships with people in the past who have harmed me and who are not sorry for the fact that they've harmed me. Yeah. So this means that I would no longer have any of my parents in my life if they continued to harm me in the same way. So if you think you've forgiven your parent, but you still have them in your life doing the same thing, you haven't forgiven them, yeah. right? Simple. And so this is an indication that, you know, forgiveness requires that you see what they're doing wrong mm -hmm. and that you no longer tolerate it. Yes, <laughs> because when we engage forgiveness, it, to me, I, the way it feels to me is like it's a huge engagement with love and truth. We are saying, I want to um, face and feel the truth about what really happened from to God's me. perspective to me. I want with all of my heart to love me and the person who harmed me. So when we are engaged now, in that process, it? or can I just yeah, say yeah, yeah. about what it means to love the other person? That's what you're going to say, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah, 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 so I'm going, that's where I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so once we really engage with that and say, I want this truth and I want this love, um, then we, what it means is once we completed that, we we have that state within us the the truth is not going to be movable we know what happened for sure and we're we're okay with it now you know there's no more pain associated with it mm -hmm. but also we are certain that we want to love ourselves enough that we no longer say that's acceptable what just happened because we understand it was a sin it's not going to stand it anymore acceptable. it wasn't acceptable <laughs> yeah. god did not think that was good yeah. um but also we are not going to um, want to support that sin as a, as a measure of our love for the person who harmed us. There is no way we're going to ever say in any way through our behaviour, words or actions or anything, say, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with what you did. Because that yeah. would be supporting the sin in them. That's right. And that would be unloving. That's right. So to me, forgiveness is this like, mighty process it's such a strengthening process of love and truth within oneself mm -hmm. and when you engage with it it means no you you know the truth you love that truth you love that person you love yourself but that's going to mean you don't if stand they're continuing for that stuff. the same behavior if they feel it's fine what they did you you won't accept that no and, and you won't be able to probably spend any time with them i no. would suggest no. and uh and and yet Almost every person I've ever met who claims they've forgiven somebody always finishes up spending time yeah. with the person they think they've forgiven yeah. when that person is not repentant. Yes. Now, it's different if the person decides that they want to acknowledge their, the, the truth of what they've been doing, their behaviour, and engage a repentance process. Oh, oh it's a totally Completely different Completely different, thing. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then there's all this love for that person and desire to assist that person and all, all these kinds of things. That's right. But you yeah. can't assist somebody who is completely unable to see what they've done. Yes. And it's pointless trying to engender a desire for that person to repent by spending time with them or berating them with what they've done. Or, exactly. None of that is loving. No. Yeah. No. Convincing them that they've been unloving yeah. is a pointless task. Yeah. 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 You're better off not... In fact, if you truly love them, you would not spend any more time with them until they had a breakthrough and said and realised that they have been unloving. Yeah. 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 That is the loving course yeah. of action. And that they have that breakthrough through their own humility yeah. is probably the best yeah. course of action. Well, and because, as we were going to see, compensation is working very strongly to assist to them assist in their them, repentance yeah. process. And, yeah. and everything you do to undo the work of compensation <laughs> yeah, is another compensation <laughs> you yes. will have to have. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's the thing. such a good point. Yeah. All right. I'm also happy, contented, and I have less physical pain and suffering. Yeah, so childhood sort of uh, diseases or physical ailments that we had, instead of worsening, they actually get better. Mm. So a good sign that we have actually improved in some of these issues is that our body and its functions improve, mm -hmm. not get worse. Not get worse, mm. yeah. Um, I'm able to make wise decisions about people in my life and I will know who is going to harm me and or potentially harm me and who won't. Yeah, yeah. so I stop sort of inviting 
See, see, a lot of people who have, have not forgiven unwittingly invite mm-hmm. people of, who are harmful into mm-hmm. their lives yeah. because they haven't forgiven the original person mm-hmm. that harmed them. They unwittedly invite similar people, kinds of people into their life. It's kind of like because you don't want to be sensitive emotionally to the truth of what was done to you. To you the are pain, to, to the, the pain. pain. Yeah. But you don't want to be sensitive to have a really clear knowledge of what it was then you can't be sensitive in to the people around you who have the same intentions and desires exactly the people who have this intention to cause the same pain the same pain you Mm. don't want to be knowledgeable about how that happened and the Mm. process and the emotions in the person who did the harm primarily so therefore you're not sensitive to emotion those same emotions in other people are you that's right yeah yeah so it's it's sad but that's what we do we we track people and unfortunately uh, um and this particular point we're trying to make too is about wise decisions. You see, a wise decision would be able to be able to be sensitively recognise a person who's going to cause the same kind of pain that you had caused to you in your childhood, mm-hmm. and to not engage the person because they're going to cause the same kind of pain, mm-hmm. or at least to tell them that's the reason why you're not engaging them. Right? Yeah. That would be the loving thing to do. Um, that's not often what we do. Mm-hmm. What we do is we're unwitting because we haven't we haven't forgiven really. We're unwittingly inviting them into our life only to find out three, six, nine, 12 months, 18 months, two years, five years down the track that they actually were the same kind of people yeah. that caused our pain in the original, yeah. the original pain we have. Yeah. And, and so we frequently don't make very wise decisions. And, and the reason why we're not making the wise decision is because our emotion mm. is such that we're not sensitive to the pain. Yeah. And we're trying to block the pain inside of ourselves Mm. and since we're trying to block the pain we can't feel the intentions of another to cause that kind of pain yeah that's the compensatory effect that's the compensation that's what we're saying Mm. yeah however if we have forgiven then Then it's completely the opposite you can see immediately ah that kind of person is that kind of person (laughs) yeah i know that kind of person because i had to go through a whole (laughs) bunch of pain about and then you make a decision yeah you make a decision then to go do I really want to spend time with that kind of person or what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, And then you can also detect the other kind of people who are not going to cause yeah. that pain. You can go, oh, that kind of person, not that kind of person, yeah. <laughs> you know, that caused my pain. This is a lovely kind of person. I really like this kind of person. Yeah. You know? And you have a tendency to invite yeah. those kind of people in your life. Then. Yeah. And, and also something we've talked about over the years is the sensitivity to danger because we're talking here about wise decisions. You know, yeah. There's a lot of issues um, where people have been physically harmed and sexually harmed in their past. Yes. And, um, and they're not sensitive. They're not sensitive to, to risky situations the that they get themselves into because they're still wanting to suppress and deny the very high risk and horrible situations in which they were first harmed in that way. Yeah. They want to have an emotional denial of that. So then they get themselves into situations where they're not sensitive to the danger that's right here and right now. Yeah. yeah. So a good sign that you're on the process of forgiveness is to be able to recognise in a person shortly after meeting them that they have intentions mm. that are very similar to the intentions of somebody who's harmed you in the past. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Mm. All right. Obviously, if I truly forgive, then the compensatory benefit is that I'm going to grow emotionally. Yes, and, and this is a very important compensatory benefit. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to, to grow emotionally first requires, of course, that we become sensitised to our pain mm. and then we can become sensitised to who caused it mm-hmm. and, and whether it was us or somebody else. We release it mm-hmm. and now we remain very sensitive to the potential of more pain, mm. which means that we will probably naturally avoid situations that will create these kind of mm. uh, these kinds of pain. So being sensitive emotionally is such an important thing. The other thing is that the more sensitive emotionally we become, ironically, the less sensitive we become as a person relating to fear and rage and other kinds of emotions. What do you mean by that? Sorry. Well, because we've released all the causes of emotions that trigger our anger and our fear and our our other sort of dark feelings, Mm -hmm. the more sensitive we become and and the more we we are able to release our past hurt, the the less sensitive in you, the sense you mean of defensive reactive, or reactive, reactive yeah, yeah, we are yeah. Yeah. to people who may do that to us again. Yes, we're much more cool and calm, aren't we? 
and, and much more relaxed. And we're much more relaxed about saying no. Yeah. And we're much more relaxed about saying, no, I don't think I want you in my life. Or, or <laughs> I disagree. Or I disagree yeah. or whatever. We, yeah. we become much more relaxed about all those things because yeah. we've dealt with all of the... Sort of painful emotion that's been stored in us. From our past. Yeah. Yes. So. so can you just help me out here? Because I keep having this little stumble when we talk about um, the emotional growth involved. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, when we've been talking about compensation, we've been talking about penalty and reward and an operation of a law and imp the imposition of, um, of compensation upon the soul directly, right? Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about uh, refusing to forgive, making us unable to grow and engaging forgiveness, meaning that we are able to grow, I have two questions about that. The first is, is that really compensatory uh, penalty or reward or isn't it just the natural workings of the soul that God designed? And the second question, can, can, is I, it, can I just say the second? I know yeah, but you, I'm not going to remember it. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember. Fire away yeah, if yeah, you can sorry, remember it. I'll remember. Because yeah. you it might that you might answer them together. Yeah. Um, the second question is, isn't it the if it's not just the natural workings of our soul and not compensation action, isn't it the workings of forgiveness that causes the emotional growth rather than um, somehow compensation allowing the emotional growth? Do you see what I'm asking? Mm -hmm. no, let's go back to you first. So the first question is, um, is this a compensatory penalty this lack of ability to emotionally grow when I refuse to forgive? And is it a compensatory reward, the potential to grow when I do forgive? Or is it just the natural workings of the soul that when I refuse to feel I can't grow and when I, re when I desire to engage this higher law, I will grow? I would say it's both, isn't it? Like the reality is if you lock up emotion inside of your soul, naturally, yeah. the, the, emo the uh, principle of, of preclusion yes. prevents you from growing in other emotional ways. Yes. Certainly. Yes. But, but it is also a penalty of locking up emotion. Yeah. yeah. So is it an additional thing that's added to the soul, I guess I'm asking, or is it just kind of no compensations working in harmony with the workings of the soul and therefore... Do you see what I'm asking? Yes, I, I suppose I see what you're asking, but I don't really understand why you're trying to delineate. Sort of delineate. Gotcha. The, the reason why I'm saying is that God designed the soul to respond to the law of compensation. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so no, yeah, so one, yeah. the principle That's, of preclusion is, is a, a part, part of, of the compensatory uh, effect of the law upon yeah. the soul. Yeah. So it's, it's, there's no... Do you see what I'm saying? I definitely one, see. One, I, one is not separate to the other yes. in the way that you're trying to suggest. Well, that was my, that yes, that's what I felt. But then I thought, well, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> is there an additional? What, what's going on? Well, yeah. yeah. So let's look at it. The, 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 the way God's designed the soul is to work in harmony with the laws that God's designed. And in fact, what God did was he designed the law first yes. and then he designed the soul. soul. So, 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 because it, because the laws had to exist in order for the soul to be able to function inside of the universe. Mm. So, so what God did is that God designed the laws. He, he had the design of the soul in his mind, obviously, mm -hmm. but he designed the laws and then he designed the soul to interact with the laws. Yes. Now, the, the principle of preclusion in the soul is governed by the law of compensation. Mm. In and the sense. other laws. And other laws. Yes. The law of yes. forgiveness and repentance also yeah. govern it as well. Yeah. And there's higher laws and lower laws that govern the principle of preclusion in the soul. Well, so, so, yeah. so the reality is the law of compensation does, it, it is a compensatory effect mm -hmm. that preclusion operates yeah. in the soul when we deny emotion. Yes. That's, that is yes. a compensatory effect in the soul. Uh, but it is also a principle of how the soul works. Yeah. The soul works in harmony with the law. Mm as it will always do. Because all of the operations, I can see logically that all of the operations of the soul must be in harmony with the operations of law mm. and laws were created to for the framework for the operations of the soul. Got it. Yeah, and yeah. if you consider 
as we discussed in our third assistance groups in 2016 about God's laws, yeah. God's laws were all created for the sake of humanity. Yes. So, so they were really all created for the sake of the soul. soul. Yeah. So the law of compensation was created for the sake of the soul. So the soul could exist in the universe. Mm. And without the law existing, the soul could not exist. Mm. And the reality is the law of compensation, if it was taken out of the universe, the soul itself could not exist. Mm. So, so these two things work in harmony with each other mm -hmm. to create effects in the soul that correct or reward what the soul chooses to do. Yeah. And, and without that process of the law working in harmony with the, act, with the will of the soul, mm -hmm. there would be no law governing the soul. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so you can't really treat them as uh, one or the other. Gotcha. They are really hand in hand with each other mm -hmm. that's, and, and they require, uh, each other requires the other in order to exist. Yes. Uh, and when I say that, I mean the soul itself requires the law in order to exist. Yeah. So, so you can't sort of take a soul out of the law and have the soul exist because it can't exist you. anymore. You. And so you can't treat the two things as separate to each other. Or separate processes. Yeah. So yeah. when we say I'm, una I'm able to grow emotionally because I've forgiven, well, forgiveness has operation on the soul that pre prevents preclusion anymore. So now it's a, it now overcomes the, preclusion. It overcomes preclusion and suppression yeah. and a number of other uh, soul based principles of how the soul operates. So therefore the soul now is able to be free to be mm. experience its own emotion. Mm. If I don't forgive, mm -hmm. the law of compensation tells me that preclusion is now existing in my soul. Yes. I see. Right? Yeah. And, and, and because I'm not releasing one thing, other things can't flow. I can't grow. I can't grow. Got yep. you. Yep. Yeah. And these two, these things all operate. So, so you could say operating upon the soul is a large number of laws, yes. all of which are working hand in hand with each other in unison. In unison. Yeah. And there is a hierarchy of them. Yes. That them that control what the soul will do. Mm -hmm. And the law of conversation is one of the lowest yep. of those laws, as is the law of attraction mm -hmm. and a number of other laws that all are automatically in play mm -hmm. and then there's other laws that are only engaged by desire by the soul mm -hmm. and the law of f forgiveness and repentance is only engaged by desire but how do we know we don't have the desire yeah well the lower law tells me <laughs> yeah the yeah. law of conversation is the thing the telling impact me. of the lower law or the effect of the the lower law is it's demonstrating demonstrating that yep. the higher law has yet to be desired Yep, yep, yet to be engaged. Yet to be engaged. Yes, yep. yes. Yep. Thank you very much. All right, let's uh, round off. If I truly forgive, the compensatory feedback I'm going to receive. So obviously, as we've just said, we're going to grow emotionally. We are not engaging in these addictions to please people who are who have the intention to control me, and we're no longer driven to meet those addictions in other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So these are some signs. If you're still driven to, you know, like drawn to a person because you've got to please them, then you haven't forgiven someone in your past. If you still feel like you've got to meet the addictions of your partner or your friends or, you know, you've got to do whatever they ask, even though you don't really feel like you want to, then mm -hmm. you're still, you know, living with these addictions, even though you're telling yourself you're forgiven, right? Yes. So yes. this is what we need to see. Yeah. There are signs. Yes. And compensation provides the signs of the lack of desire to forgive or the desire to forgive. Yeah. It gives you, so here we're talking specifically about the desire to forgive and or the lack of it. Yep. And compensation will tell you if it's yes. truly happened or you truly want it. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. the lower law in operation helping the soul come to, to awareness. recognition and awareness. awareness. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm. So um, we've just said there in our conclusion that um, through the process of forgiveness and the removal of compensation, I will now have the ability to see the sin of others and how their sin has impacted upon me and my life. Mm. Very important. Very important. Yeah. Conversely, yeah. <laughs> if I refuse to forgive, compensation will continue to compound to bring me to that awareness. Um, there'll be corrective pain and suffering to help me not only see the sin, but to want to address it through this process of... Yeah, to address it with desire. Yeah. 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 So, so it's very important with the first thing you said that people will understand that, that not only do we see the sin of others, but we also see the impact it's had on our life. Because it, 
if you imagine if you don't see those two、yeah. things, it's highly likely at some point in the future you may engage the same sin. Yeah. Right. And it's highly likely you will also feed the sin of others in the same way that you、yeah. that you know the you sin、were. was committed against you in the first place, and and that would be an unloving thing to do. So、yeah. this is why these awarenesses are part of the process of forgiveness.、Mm. You need to see everything clearly. What I notice is that a lot of people believe they're forgiven, but they can't see anything very clearly,、yeah. and that's always a sign they have not <laughs> forgiven. Because <laughs> when we're harmed in our childhood, it affects. It affects so many things, doesn't it? It affects the way we view ourselves. It affects the way we view others. It affects the way we view the entire world、mm-hmm. in certain flavors, in certain ways.、Mm-hmm. And if, as you said, someone's saying, "Oh, I've forgiven them," and they can't see how that hurt has impacted on on their world view, for example, on their world view and the, their relationships or, or whatever. You you know that no you haven't fully faced the emotional truth of what's happened because、right. when you do you'll see it everywhere. Yes.、Yeah. So what we're saying in summary to people is that there are signs you have not forgiven. Yes. And there are signs you have, and the law of compensation provides the signposts sign. for those signs. Yes. Like、uh, the law of compensation compensation is the law that tells you. Yes. That this, there's a sign to you you've forgiven, or there's signs here that you have not. And if you think back over our discussions in the last three or four sessions, when we've been talking about the rewarding compensation, the penalising compensation, they're all the signs, aren't they?、Mm, they're、right. specific signs relating to specific examples that we've raised、right. to try and help people see you're operating, you're interacting with compensatory principles here. Yeah, you have this other option. So you can imagine yourself walking down a road, for example. <laughs> And there's a whole heap of signs there, and they all—they've all got your name on it, like, yeah, you know. So, so in my case, Jesus' name. So they're flashing. Jesus, you're doing this. Jesus, you're doing that. <laughs>、yeah. Jesus, you're doing this. It's a flash, 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 flash. Now, you—you、yeah. you have the ability, if you want, to walk down the road without noticing. Yeah. Right, which many people do, or you have the ability to look at the sign, and go, "Ah,、oh, yeah, fine," and then keep walking down the road, or you have the ability to look at the sign, and go, "Hang on a sec." What does that really mean? <laughs> I, I need to probably address that if、yeah. I want to be happy. So、yeah. let's go ahead and do what's necessary to address that problem,、yeah. and, and to demonstrate, in other words, true passion and commitment to actually remove from us. And and the irony is, the sign will stop flashing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like when you're driving down a road and there's these signs nowadays that flash. You're going over. You're, you're speeding. You're speeding. You're speeding. Yeah. Yeah. Slow down. Slow down.、Yeah. It it keeps flashing until you slow down,、yeah. <laughs> and it's exactly the same with the signs regarding the law of compensation with regard to forgiveness.、Mm-hmm. They will keep flashing until you're forgiven.、Mm. Once you're forgiven, they'll stop flashing. That's how you know you're forgiven. <laughs> Then you get to enjoy the night. You'll you know see the stars and <laughs> no more be, flashing no neon signs. No more flashing. You're <laughs> <laughs> grabbing your attention anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tuning to the cricket. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to our final section. Sure. Compensation helps me repent. What role does compensation or reaping what I sow play in my desire to repent? Yeah. So again,、um, we're talking about here the refusal to repent versus the process of repentance.、Mm-hmm. We're comparing it, and again, we're saying basically that law of compensation is providing the signs. Yes. It's telling us. It's giving us the feedback me- mechanism,、mm-hmm. telling us that actually you've started the process of repentance here. Yeah. Or. or- Oh, not.、Mm-hmm. You know that you haven't process. You, you haven't worked through repentance. You don't、here. want to. You don't want to, or you're、yeah. avoiding it, or whatever.、Yeah. And so it's very important for us again to see that this feedback me- mechanism is God's lo- one of God's lower laws operating upon the human soul, but very, very important to、mm-hmm. tell you that one of the higher laws, the law of forgiveness and repentance, is not being engaged.、Mm. And so now you have an opportunity to see. Okay, this is what me not. Repenting does, yeah, and this is what me repenting does. Yes, and and if we can compare the two signs, the kinds of signs, if、yes. you like,、uh, between repenting and not repenting,、yeah. now we have the ability to determine whether we have actually gone through processes of repentance、mm-hmm. or not. Mm-hmm. 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 Fantastic. All right, so let's look at the first example: the refusal to repent. What kind of compensatory feedback am I going to see in my life? Well, one of the things is I'm going to feel especially drawn to people who I can harm,、mm. 
And if you're still being drawn to people who you notice let you harm them, mm -hmm. then it means you haven't repented. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's a very interesting thing. It is. Mm. It's quite serious, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 If a if a person's willing to let you you harm them in some way, and you're willing to do it, and you're willing to do it, yeah. There's obviously still serious issues with regard to your lack of repentance. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But right. even if a person is drawn into your life who's willing to let you harm them, mm. that sees a sign mm. that that you even if you you think you've repented, it means you probably haven't. Mm. When you've truly repented, people will be drawn into your life who have some level of self worth and self esteem, mm. and those particular people won't let you get away with murder anymore. Mm. You know, they they will tell you, hang a sec, mate, you know, mm. I don't think this is right. <laughs> you know, yeah. they'll speak up. They'll, they won't, you know, be timid and quiet with you. Yeah. You know, which is great. That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want people to be real with you, right? What about, what about, because I've experienced this um, where I've had pain that, I, oh, yeah, hang on. No, it's all right. I think I get you. Yeah, it's mm. about my desire to harm others, Correct. isn't it? Not being open to others harming me. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's, that's forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to be careful here, you yeah. see. When I have a desire to harm others, I'm going to attract others who are willing to be harmed. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, you know, if you think about our relationship right at the beginning, that's yes. to a degree what it was like. I had yet to forgive in the fact that I'd been harmed. Yes. You've yet to repent for the fact that you wanted to harm. Yeah. And then when we get together, you're willing to harm me and I'm willing to be harmed. Yes. Right? That's a sign. That's a sign. That no repentance has taken place and on my part, no forgiveness uh, has taken place. Yeah. And I can say that the compensatory, there was a lot of compensation that I began to feel when I was starting to see man, like I've often commented to people, I was in such a rage and it was... More was, than you've ever been all your life, I've right? ever been. It was shocking to <laughs> and me. And you felt so drawn to do it. To do it and <laughs> I'd find myself do it again. And I eventually there was some pain that I started to sense. And, mm. and also because your nature was so not wanting to harm me, you know, and but also not... I would put up with it, and after a while I stopped putting up with it, right? Totally. So that's me working through the process of forgiveness and saying, no, yeah. hang on a sec. Yeah, that's, that's, this that's is a not big, honest no, no. behaviour, yeah. you know, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah. Whereas yeah. before then I wasn't doing that, yes. right? So that, it's a growth process in a relationship. If both parties are working, which we yeah. were, it means that you can work through these issues and oftentimes even remain together. But Yes, so you noticing the harm was part of the compensation but me yeah. also beginning to notice i'm harming someone who is not who wants to love me mm -hmm. well that started to compound over time as well exactly yeah yeah and the compensatory effects of that will feel painful yes and that will be the sign you know yes. that no i haven't dealt with the repentance issue here mm. and he hasn't dealt with the forgiveness issue there yeah mm. yeah very mm. good mm. all right um so also we'll remain this is now again if we're refusing to repent we're going to remain unhappy and have more intense physical pain and suffering. Yes, but this uh, pain and suffering is going to be worse than the pain of suffering of not forgiving. Mm. And the reason why is repenting causes far, sorry, uh, doing harm to others yes. and oneself. It causes far more physical harm to your body mm -hmm. than, than refusing to repent, uh, forgive others for the harm they've done yeah and there's you can understand why god's made it that way because obviously doing harm is worse than receiving the harm yeah. Yeah. and so god's made it that way that the price of doing harm is higher mm. than the price of receiving harm of receiving it mm. yeah yeah okay i'm going to remain unable to make wise decisions in my relationships and have a tendency to destroy others yes so this is sort of the flip side of forgiveness isn't it in mm. forgiveness we have a tendency to allow others to harm us mm -hmm. this one is oh, i'm not making wise decisions here i attract people who i can harm yep. and then i go ahead and, and harm, harm them, them. And, <laughs> and i don't i and I feel drawn to do I, it. Yes, I feel like a desire to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I go ahead and do it. Yes. And that's always a sign that we have not repented. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, we remain unable to grow emotionally. 
So just, yes, now this is even more severe than the unable to grow emotionally from forgiveness. From a lack of forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. from a lack of forgiveness. Because uh, when, we're, when we're not repentant, there are more harmful emotions mm. inside of us from mm -hmm. the law of compensation than there were associated with our, uh, the fact that we've been harmed by others. Mm. Because there's a double up of the harm. Mm. There's the harm that we're doing to ourselves which is going to be more intense than the harm we've done to others. And then there's the harm we did to others. Yeah. So the harm we did to others is bad enough. That, you know, that's what they'll have to forgive, and that's hard enough. Yeah. But on top of that, we've done a lot of harm to ourselves, which is also going to be very painful, yeah. that we're going to have to repent for. Yes. And, and that's going to be very difficult to go through. So, so it's like a doubling up of emotional harm. Mm -hmm. So a person who has a lot to repent for yeah. finds life a lot more difficult yes and and finds repentance a lot more difficult than forgiveness yes mm. yes yeah yeah all right um you touched on this one but it's well worth a mention mm -hmm. <laughs> um that i remain driven to force to control to manipulate or to demand that other people please me yeah uh, and and it's and after a while if you can become sensitive to it you'll notice it yeah if you think you've repented, but you're still driven to get people to do what you want, you haven't repented. No. Um, a it person is... who truly repents mm -hmm. stops demanding anything of others yeah. because they know that it hurts them. Yes, hurts the other people. <laughs> hurts the other person and yeah. them. And, the, and, and themselves. Then themselves. Yeah. So they've gone through the pain. They yeah. know yeah. <laughs> that it hurts them too. You yeah. know what I mean? And they'd never want to do it anymore. Yeah, and we should say that it's... People who refuse to repent, a lot of these things are happening for them, but they don't even want to know that it's happening for them. So that's right. That's right. It is a good sign if you if you still don't want to repent, but you start to you start notice to these things because yeah. it's showing, oh, there's something opening up towards exactly. repentance. Exactly. Most now. people who need to repent have complete denial of these issues. Of these issues. And they become more and more severe. And like I said, the pain has to become quite intense yeah. before they finish up addressing them. Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right, and a person remains driven to meet their own unhealthy addictions, no matter what the cost to themselves or to other people and other people's happiness. Yeah, so if you're driven to drink, even though it harms you, if you're driven to drink, even though it harms somebody else, mm. harms somebody else, you know, you haven't repented for, mm. for whatever it is you need to repent for, for why you drink. And, you know, uh, that's a that's a quite a substantial physical addiction, but there's mm. a lot of things that I see people engaging in where they're, oh, I'm going to compete with women. I'm going to put, I'll, I'll I'll put, put them down. I'll put women down in some kind of underhanded way. And yeah. I'm, I'm just doing that compulsively whenever I'm around a woman. Yeah. And, and, and the, you know, but I don't want, I don't no want to be aware there. of that at all. And that's showing that there's no repentance. Yeah. And a lack of awareness is demonstrating greatly there's no repentance. Yes. Like the more you become aware, the more impelled you become to repent. To repent. Yeah. For what you've done to harm others. Yeah. So the fact that you are not even aware and somebody's going to tell you, you're doing this and you go, no, I'm not. Yeah. That is an indication that you're completely unaware generally. Now, yeah. that's not always the case, of course, because you can become very developed and start to right the wrongs of your past mm -hmm. and start doing things God's way. Mm -hmm. And the people around you still want you to do it their way. Yeah. And of course, they'll think that you're wrong. Yeah. Right. So you've also got to be able to measure that. Is yeah. this God's way that I'm engaging? Yes. Or is it my way? My way. <laughs> and most yeah. people who need to repent do a lot of things their way. Their way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this is also interesting, isn't it? Because back when we first introduced compensation in this series, we talked about why sometimes things feel like they're getting worse when they're actually getting better. And sometimes when we start to see our own sin and notice all the ways that we're harming others, we're actually making progress towards the process of, of repentance, mm -hmm. but it can feel very bad. Yes, you know, because you're, you're facing, you're having to reassess your version of yourself. And, oh, there I am again. Oh, Correct. look at that. Oh my gosh, I can't maintain the 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 kind of illusion that I'm actually like, you know, a deeply loving person because I just did this other thing. You know, most yeah. people are in love with their facade, yeah. and and giving up their facade is is a very difficult process, mm -hmm. but a necessary one. Mm. Um, but it is also one of the processes that most people, because it's so difficult 
strenuously avoid. Yeah. And uh, and we see people even around us who've who've heard divine truth for years and years and years still strenuously avoiding mm. giving up their facade mm. because because to do it you've got to go through some processes of repentance yeah. and it's very very hard yeah. repentance is a difficult process but a very very um rewarding one yes and it also means if you go through repentance that you won't have long list of compensatory problems to address in your future. Mm -hmm. So, so it's much better to do it d through desire yeah. than it is to do it with avoidance, because then compensation grinds you into mincemeat <laughs> as you deal with yes. every single pain. Yes. You know, whereas repentance doesn't do that. Yeah. Rep repentance, you yourself come to your awarenesses, yeah. and it's a much more loving process, as you can imagine. Yes. But when I say much more loving, conversation is also a loving process, yeah. but repentance is engaging the flavours of God's love in it, yeah. whereas the conversatory processes are natural love processes mm. that are just enforced upon all humanity. Mm. Mm. God's love makes everything better. Yeah, so it's much more intensely loving yeah. as a result. Yeah, mm. you get to receive love as you are removing sin yes whereas with compensation and the removal of sin you are doing it alone aren't you you're doing it alone and on top of that you still have not yet established a relationship with god because you, you're unwilling yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're unwilling to go through yeah. it the conversation the fact that you're under the law of compensation demonstrates you're unwilling mm. so you don't want to yield to god's way yet no yeah. no and therefore don't want to yield to god yet yeah and, and obviously that's going to have, you know, it's going to feel quite harsh, yeah. even though it's not. Yeah. It's just trying to readdress the imbalance of love that exists within you. That's mm -hmm. all it's trying to do. Mm -hmm. But most people feel that's quite harsh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's now talk about um, the compensatory feedback. And again, we should reiterate that all these things we're talking about are signposts. That you yeah, so we've already analogy. talked about the negative feedback yes. or, or the feedback that's saying you haven't done it yet. Yes. Now let's talk about the feedback that says you're probably on the way of doing it. Yeah, now. You, you're getting close. <laughs> you gauge some repentance. Yeah, right? What's yeah. the feedback there? Yeah. All right. So the first one is that I am loving, and this is loving from God's perspective. Mm hmm to the people that I've previously harmed. Yes, yeah, so so I no longer I no longer harm them. I no longer try to harm them. I also no longer put up with their guilt trips or whatever they try to put on with mm -hmm. about harming them mm -hmm. in the past. Um, I, I but I don't I don't avoid the but truth I don't that I've avoid the them. truth that I harm yeah. them. So yeah. so and I have felt about the truth that I've yeah. harmed them. Yeah. So and I don't get angry with them and they tell them, me they've harmed me. So they that I've harmed them. That I've harmed them. Yep. I don't yep. get angry and frustrated with them. I'm yep. very patient with them and yep. so forth because I know that I created harm for them. Yeah. And if they want to live in their lack of forgiveness, I don't get angry about that either. Mm. In other words, I don't demand their forgiveness. Yes, that's a very important one, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, also, obviously, I'm going to have these benefits of being happier and more content and having less physical pain and... Uh, uh, suffering basically in my life yes the rewards of repenting are greater than the rewards of forgiveness mm. which is interesting isn't it because the penalties of a lack of repentance are, are greater. greater and the rewards are greater and yeah. when i say the rewards are greater the rewards are greater because the contrast between mm -hmm. the intense penalty and the reward yes. is greater yes in the sense that with the with repentance you ha there are more penalties associated with not repenting. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, you get more pain, more suffering, more physical pain, more disease and so forth. Yeah. And then as you release that and you let yourself repent, you get yeah. you, you, the contrast between those two states yeah. is greater. So you, you really notice a huge difference in your health and your well-being and everything. It's like carrying a really heavy, heavy load for 100 metres and putting it down, the relief you feel is immense. Whereas if you just carry, you know, the mug for 100 metres yeah. and put it down, well, that's not, nice. Not as noticeable. It's nice, but it's not like a massive relief when you don't feel like a sudden physical change. That's right. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, I'm able to make wise decisions about people and no longer have a desire to harm or destroy other people. Mm. You know, the, again, because we've now repented for what we've done, we can see what we did. Mm. We can now see how damaging what we did was to other people mm. and how damaging it was to our relationships with them. 
we now no longer have a desire to do it. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we no longer desire to destroy or harm others. Mm. And so obviously we're going to feel now that we can make wise decisions when we're interacting with others in that we're no longer going to make the decision to harm them. Mm. So, so what happens is that if they give us the opportunity to harm them, yeah. we don't take it. Yeah. And if they give us the opportunity to take advantage of them, mm. we don't take advantage of them. Mm. We don't. Mm. So if you're still taking advantages of people, taking advantages of the opportunity they offer, then you, you haven't repented. Yeah. Mm. In fact, it's a very cruel thing to do, isn't it? To yeah, blame it someone for their propensity to accept your harm for the harm you're doing. Yeah. It shows an extreme lack of uh, yeah. desire to repent. An example of that could be somebody might have a poor sense of worth and we mm. notice they have a poor sense of worth and we notice that they might do things for us if we manipulate their poor yeah. sense of worth. If we make them feel right? a bit guilty or something. Yeah. yeah, but we don't do it. Yeah. We don't manipulate them. We don't yeah. push them around. We don't try yeah. to manipulate them into into doing what mm. we want. And we don't even want what we wanted before we, anymore. We from couldn't them. think of doing that. We couldn't that. think yeah. of doing it anymore. Yeah, mm. yeah. very nice. Uh, when we, the compensation for truly wanting to repent is that I'm able to grow emotionally. Yeah, now obviously, again, the emotions inside of us for not repenting are much greater than the emotions inside of us for not forgiving. Yeah. So that means that the benefits emotionally are much greater if we repent. Mm -hmm. But it is a much more intense emotional experience as well. Yeah. So that naturally, you know, you go through some more intense emotional experiences when you repent. But at the end of them, mm -hmm. you will actually feel very sensitive and you'll, you'll notice the difference between the two states. You'll be much more sensitive to what you've done yeah. and, and what you desired to do and why. And you'll know why you even desired it and you'll have dealt with that. Yeah. You'll, you'll have released that yes. from yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm no longer driven to force, control, manipulate or demand that other people please me. And in fact, I would feel very uncomfortable with any kind of demand coming out of me. Mm. Mm. So, you know, this is where uh, most people who have this, uh, you know, desire to control, manipulate, whatever. Um, these are all based upon, you know, wanting things from other people, obviously. Mm. And here we're basically saying, well, because I've repented for my, my unloving behaviour, I know that to demand something of somebody is wrong, mm. that it's not respecting their free will. Even if they'll give it to me, mm. it's not respecting their free will. And to demand it is a definite, definitely a wrong thing to do. Mm. And, and so we don't even try anymore to do that. And, and we don't, we're not trying to manipulate anybody. And sooner or later, we, we notice that, oh, that person's open to manipulation. Mm. But, but to do it would be a terrible thing that I'd do to them. Mm. And so I don't do it. Mm. 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 Uh, and of course, I'm no longer driven to meet my own unhealthy addictions and I always consider equally the cost. This is important. I consider equally the cost of any behaviour I engage in, whether that cost is personal or paid by others. Mm. So, so now, I, because I've repented, I now have a, a much stronger sense of equality within me. Mm. And this sense of equality is, is saying to me, if the harm is to me or to another, mm -hmm. it's just as bad. Mm. It, it, I, I, I don't measure yeah. the harm as others as, as better than the harm to me yes. anymore. Or less significant. Or less significant than yeah. the harm to me anymore. I sort of see the harm of others as just as critical as the harm to myself. Mm. I have an even way, an equal way of examining everything and every relationship mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. which means I also no longer do things like thinking that my money is more important than yours yeah. or my time is more important than yours or yeah. my effort is more important than yours yeah. or any of those kind of things. Yes. I think they're all equal, mm -hmm. right? And I try to save your time as much as I try to save mine. Yeah. And I try to save your money as much as I try to save mine. Yes. I try to do what's good for you as much as I try to do what's good for me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is what we do if we've repented. Yeah, I've just been sitting here thinking about how rare repentance, how rare it is for repentance to occur on earth. Um, and I know that you are a person who has repented some things, but, well, a lot of things, but 
a lot of the, the repentance that I'm aware of that you've had to go through is through the establishing of um, the expectation that people can treat you badly <laughs> in your sons or something like that or, you know, in the, in the way that you... Well, that's a lot about forgiveness. I've had to go is. through a lot of forgiveness emotions. But, but with regard to repentance, I've also had to do a lot of those. I wasn't driven like many that's people on I'm earth are to, to do... Uh, are today to harm other people and to take and to you, take from not, people. You've never been a taker. No, <laughs> no, no, and and so that's not been sort of something that I've had a lot of problems with. No, and there are times when I have, you know, yeah. and particularly when it came to my feelings of loss of my soulmate, you, yes. and I, you know, I've had, I, I definitely have had bad projections, uh, you know, expectations, I suppose you could yeah. say, and loving demands of others because of my inability to handle the grief of losing you. Yeah. And so I, once I went through, or I have gone through a lot of that grief, I've, I've righted a lot of those kind of yes. problems. Yeah. But, uh, but when it comes to generally harming environment or other things, those are not things that I'm given to strongly. So, no. so naturally there's less that I've had to process there. Yes. Um, yeah. But I have had to do a lot of work with forgiveness. Yes. Um, because I have had an extreme amount of yep. harm given, uh, put upon me, even now, still do, mm. uh, from spirits and other people. Mm. And, uh, and so I find forgiveness is a constant sort of a yeah. process that I have to go through. Yeah. And that's been your life for as long as I've known you for 2,000 years. You've been a constant forgiver. Yeah. 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 So. I, I so, suppose I, I have a bit more experience in repentance in when it comes to the span of our life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and some of it not because of any of your fault even, it's because of what was perpetrated against you as well. Yeah, and we'll get to that, I suppose, in this discussion, how interrelated repentance and forgiveness end up being. Yes, because uh, repentance involves forgiveness, mm -hmm. actually. You've mm. got, uh, when you repent for your own behaviour, you eventually trace it back to a source mm. and then you've also generally got to forgive, forgive that source, that source. Yeah. For, for causing yeah. a lot of these kind of things within you. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there, are, there are very definitely joined together and we'll go through that in later discussions. Yes. But, um, yeah, I, I sort of feel like you're right, though. Repentance is something that very unwillingly undertaken many times on earth. Yeah. But it is also a very beautiful thing when you see it. Yes. Um, when people are actually fully repentant, yeah. um, it has a wonderful effect on mm. people around them yeah, if, so if those people are willing to forgive. Yeah, <laughs> and it's sort of, it feels to me that the people who have really repented for a certain way that they've harmed, they almost become champions of of the loving way in they regard do. to they that do. issue. You know, they really... Which is a natural uh, yeah. consequence of full repentance. Yes. Mm. You, you, you have connected so much to the truth, like we talked about in forgiveness, of the injury and the error and the full... Because part of repentance is wanting to know the full amount of damage that that... That you did. That you did. Yeah. Uh, once you do that, you become so sensitive to the to the potential harm and the harm in that area. You almost become like a a champion for the loving way and and the you most do. outspoken to other people who have the same sin. And that's because same... you're, part of repentance is the recompense process, yeah. where you you're you're trying to right the wrong that you committed. Yes. Now it's not, not always out of duty either. No, it's out of desire. Yeah. You know the damage that's done. You can see the damage it does in the world. You're trying to help others to work through the issues. Yeah, so yeah. you do it out of desire. So yes, it's a very important process, the recompense process, mm. part of forgiveness, uh, repentance, because it, because it actually does indicate that you are fully repentant for what you did. Yeah. In other words, if a person isn't engaging the recompense process mm. where they're trying to help other people see the problem of this particular thing yeah. they did, yeah. then um, then it's highly likely they're not repentant. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, because they don't actually want to face. Yeah, so if a person's unwilling to openly discuss mm. what they've done, mm. they're unwilling to openly talk about the problems of what happened with mm. what they did, then they are not repentant. Mm. And that's mm. another sign yeah. the law of compensation brings you to demonstrate, to demonstrate. that you're not repentant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. All right. So if we review the entire issue of repentance, mm -hmm. we can see that compensation is continually providing me feedback. Yep. And when I've truly repented, now I can see my own sin. 
um, and I can see how it's in, impacted upon me, on my life, on the person that I've harmed, their life, all the people who are connected to that person and how that effect negatively affected their life. I see the full picture, don't I? Yes, and, and it's more that how it impacts upon you is far less important to you yes. than how it impacted on everybody else. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then on the flip side of that, when I continually resist repentance, compensation is going to be showing me that in a lot of ways um, that I, I'll still be wanting to harm myself and I still want to be harming others, which, I'll, which will be harming me and others. Mm -hmm. I'll still be um, in a lot of pain and suffering. They're just compensation is going to be trying to help me see the problem. And I'm going to avoid the process of recompense or the, avoid yes. the process of trying to right my wrong. I'm yeah. going to always sleaze my way out of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know slippery what I mean? Slide slippery slippery my yeah. way out of, uh, you know, making, making reparation mm. for what I've done. Mm. And uh, this is not the uh, sign of a person who has been repentant mm. so or is repentant. And it's, it's pretty true to say, isn't it, that when I'm resisting repentance, I haven't yet given up the desire to act in that sin. I'm still creating harm. Yes. I'm still doing yes. harm yes. to others. Yes. It, the, the, and it's not finished yet, even no. if I see intellectually. Yeah. I'm still on that downward sort of uh, tra trajectory. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, like I feel in this discussion, what we've done is we've tried to show people the signs mm. of, of repentance. Like how, do you, yeah. how do you see whether you are repentant? And, it, and again, I must emphasize, it's the law of compensation through through its action yeah. that shows you ah i have no desire to repent or yeah. i have very little desire to repent at this yeah. stage yeah mm. yeah fantastic mm. thank you mm. that concludes our we're up to now our eighth session mm -hmm. in this series mm -hmm. forgiveness and repentance thank you everyone for joining us today uh, just a quick recap of everything we've covered so remembering back to sessions one two and three we, talk, we introduced you guys to what this series was all going to be about, the principle of having one truth, absolute God's truth about matters, uh, how we establish that, and then what God's truth about forgiveness and repentance actually is. Mm. Yeah. And then we, by the time we got to session three, we're now talking about the you know, developing sincerity to forgive and repent, but also we talked about the emotion, the responsibility to do it. Mm. Like most people don't think it's a responsibility, mm. and we we, we did, had to have a bit of a discussion about accidental versus for, you know intentional intentional sin, yeah. because you know most people think that they are doing accidents when they're actually quite intentional. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd like to say they are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, yeah, and in that third session, we also talked about developing sincerity, didn't we? Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So in these final, well, they're not final sessions at all. In sessions four, five, six, seven, and, and eight, eight <laughs> so <laughs> last five sessions, yeah. we've discussed conversation at length. Yes. Uh, I think hopefully you've got some really good ideas about how conversation is operating continually in your life yeah. and how you've got some really good clues to be able to measure and to become sensitive to compensation. And just now in the wrap up of this eight session, we've really tried to help you see that becoming aware and sensitive and wanting to know how compensation is operating in your life can give you massive clues as to where you're at in your spiritual development, whether you've forgive, forgiven or whether you just don't want to forgive and whether you've repented or whether you're just fighting that process um, of engaging the higher laws and mm. repenting for the harm you've done to others. Yeah, the other thing I'd like to point out to our listeners too is that um, those of you who are considering coming to the assistance groups for with regard to understanding sin and its causes and also removing sin and its causes, obviously this information that we're presenting during this these, these sessions about forgiveness and repentance are going to be key mm -hmm. uh, for your understanding of that. So my suggestion is that if you're thinking of coming to those groups, Spend a bit of time on this material because we're going to be looking at this material in a bit more depth yeah. when we come to those groups. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us. In our ninth, se ninth session, which is coming up, we are going to introduce the topic of the human conscience. And I get excited about this topic and emotional and all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> um, I hope you uh, will join us for that. 
and we'll see you then. We should thank our wonderful team who's been helping us in the studio today. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And thank you, darling, for just your wonderful wisdom. I've absolutely enjoyed speaking with you about compensation. Yeah, and hopefully our listeners have learnt some things about compensation that they didn't know before. Yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to sharing about the conscience because that's something that yeah. we have not shared much about in a public way. We've done it yes. privately with different individuals, but yeah. not much publicly. And we'd love to uh, share that information with you next. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks.